You're listening to The Swingdom, the champion podcast of the year. Two guys, 28 clubs, zero putts given, with your hosts, Ben Ridner and Gunnar Kane. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Swingdom. We're on our second part of our yardage book. As you can tell, I'm back at Bovey Tracy Golf Center in Bovey Tracy, Devon, England. I'm on the first green, zooming in, again, trying to get it to fit this picture as best as possible. You can adjust it so it's a bit more upright like I'm doing. Zoom in, zoom out. There's slope around the green. There's a bunker. You can try to get it all in. What you're going to do now is you're going to take the measuring tool and... This green is a bit smaller, so I do it in 3x3 three three yards. Most of the time, you you do this in 5x5 five five yards. Um, but I prefer doing this in 3x3 three three yards. So I pick the very front of the green out. It's usually somewhere right around here. Um, there will be a little window on the left corner, and you'll be able to see basically what is exactly 3 yards. Make sure that when you select the measuring tool, you put it in yards if your course is in yards. And put it in meters if your course is in meters. The closer you zoom in, the easier it is to adjust exactly how long this yellow line is. And you're going to need this yellow line for a point later on in the video. So zoom out. That's what it looks like. Sort of top to bottom. You've got a decent straight line right there. Now you go and you save this image. File will come up. Save it. I saved mine as green tutorial. For some reason, none of my my Windows files show up when I am do my window screen stuff. So this is really all I can do at the moment. So I've got this saved. And then I'm going to go from Google Earth into Inkscape. So I've got a new file open in Inkscape. I'm going to import the image of the first green. Make sure that you import it. All of this mouse moving, it there are there is a file there, you just can't see it. Place it over your piece of paper. And then I'm going to just make it just a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter because you've got that yellow line. It's still going to be basically three yards <clears throat> measured through it. So I'm going to my objects, um, fill in stroke settings, and I'm going to drop the opacity down just to make sure that I know where the green is sitting on the paper. That's fine. That's good. I zoom in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F6, and I'm going to draw a line over this line. So zoom all the way in. I try to get it as accurate as possible. So now technically, this will be a three-yard, two-scale line. Uh, I try to adjust it to get it as straight as possible because I will be using this line to create squares. So the straighter it is, the better it is. So you want it to be absolutely as straight as possible. All right there. So I'm still straightening it out, obviously, just making sure it's, it's perfect. I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to move this line off the page. I'm going to copy this line, turn it 90 degrees. And I will set it into the corner. I'll do that again. Keep it the right way up. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating a box. So this is a three by three yard box to scale. So there you go, and then I will select all four lines, and you can go into, uh, I believe it's edit, but I just hit control G, so I group them all together. Then what I do now is I bring it up and down the page and sort of get a guesstimate of how many rows and columns I need. So I'll go into, I want to say it's, it's edit. And you'll see clone, and then down one, you'll see tile clone. Sorry, you can't see it on mine. 
and you can select how many rows and columns you want. So I wanted eight columns by six columns. Select it and hit create, and there you go. You've got your grid that fits perfectly over your green. Select it. I hit control G again because I want it just as one group. Make sure it fits over. Feel good about it. You don't have to adjust it anymore. Um, and then something I like to do, you don't have to do this, is I will now, I'll zoom in. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I do like doing this. You, um, Bezier, your green and your fringe. You can go and do most of the neck. I ended up going back and just doing the fringe. And then you're going to pull those out to measure, you know, to be a, an accurate rendition of what your green and fringe look like. You can do the sand trap if you want, but I find that if you want the green to be bigger, sometimes the sand trap floats into another page when you're cutting them out. So this is what I like to do. I like to go to the very bottom of the green. <clears throat> Make sure this fits over again. Just double checking all of it. Um, I go back to just my regular line. And what I like to do is put a little red T at the bottom. So I know that that's the front of the green. Whatever my yardage is, I'm measuring to this T. So I'll do it in black. And then I will set the stroke to red. So then I'll have a red line at the bottom of it. So that's basically exactly where... The front of the green starts where if I'm doing any of my yardages, that's where those yardages come from. So there you go. It's red. Yay, red. Zoom out. And then what you can do is I, so I will set my middle line to it. I like doing it in even so then you have a middle line. Zoom in as close as you can. And it should almost connect itself. So... There you go. I'm just doing it from a little bit further out. I'm going to zoom back in again just to double check it all. And it connects right up. So there you go. So now you have a grid over your green. Save that. I like I would save that as green number one. Save it as a PDF or however you want to save it. I don't have the front fringe. I could have dragged it down and had the front fringe, but I'd rather just have the front of the green because that's what my yardages are going to. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it either way. I just sort of did it this way. I like dropping down the grid opacity so that shows up more of a gray than a black. So I've got the the black is the green. The gray is the grid. So now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm saving this. And I will actually print this out as a full page and take it to my golf course for notes. Now that you've done your sketch on Inkscape and you've put a grid over it, since my greens and my local golf course are smaller, I did three by three yards instead of five by five yards. Um, I've got my string that's marked at every three yards and at every yard and a half. I've got one basically to mark the middle of this. I've got, I use trekking poles just because I have a bunch of them lying around, but I use them to mark it. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a a pocket full of T's so you can basically mark every three yards in either direction. Um, and then I'll get out my rangefinder to make sure that it's somewhat correct. So let's let's see how this goes. Okay, so now I've got my angles correct. I'm 25 yards from that T to the post, 25 yards from that T to the post. I'm using T's to 
mark every half yard. Because what I'm going to end up doing is moving this over to that side, doing the same thing, and then moving this middle line so that I can get my reeds. So what you really need is a lot of tees. All right. So it took me about a half an hour, 40 minutes, but I've moved the string from left to right. Using the markings on it, I was able to do that to my map. I've got my phone. I have everything from about 12.4% slope all the way to, I think there's something that's very close to zero. I've got one right there, one up here. So there does seem to be a little bit of a gully up that way, which is quite nice. I haven't marked where the hole is. It's right there. Um, because as I come out and play more, I'll be able to mark where the hole is on my paper and then be able to decipher where it is. All this will go back home. Thank you guys for watching me out here on the green. Back to the, back to the, the office space, back to the studio, back to the, back to the office. Back to the office. So we're back in the office. I'm going to show you how to make the actual yardage book now. Um, those greens are great for green devices. You're going to import your ninth hole. And then you're going to resize your ninth hole. You can use the measurements at the top and the bottom to gauge how big your page is. And then you can adjust it fully. Um, what I did is I took five pieces of paper because I am at a nine hole golf course and I cut that paper in half top to bottom in portrait way. And then I folded it and then I wrote basically like green one at the top hole one at the bottom. And then when I took the pieces, the pieces, the pieces of paper apart, I was able to sort of like put them next to each other and see what they would look like front and back. Um, and so I know that on my first page, I'm going to have green one and hole nine. And so on my second piece, it's going to be green two, hole eight. And then when you sort of get an idea, you know, you flip them over and it'll say what it is on that is on the backside as well. Um, it makes it so much easier to do. So I spent a lot of time sort of resizing these. I wanted the sizes to be just perfect. I wanted to, them to be as big as, as they can be. You can do this on any size paper. I did this on regular paper. Um, but I think if you do this on A4, it's like the actual yardage book size, like four and a half by six and a half or whatever it is. I think it's like, yeah, nine by 13 or nine by 11 or something. Um, now I'm going to be, now I'm going to import um, my first screen. And so because all of the pages nest into each other, it, it's very, very helpful to sort of go through and figure out which greens need to be above which holes so that when you do staple it all together, it makes sense. Resize this. I left the bunker in this just for notes so I can basically do, you know, yardage from 100 yards out to, you know, to clear the green. I mean, to clear the bunker. Um, I don't love that the bunker was in it. it. It ended up sticking out too far. I really just wanted the green kind of in there and centered. I didn't do the fringe on this one either. Um, I had to remake it. I didn't save that other one. So there's the bunker. The bunker will stick out a little bit further than I probably should. That's how far it can stick out. Um, and if you use the, you know, the mouse will have little black arrows at the top and on the left. And it'll give you basically an exact measurement of how big it is. So you want each one of these things to take up a quarter. Um, then for fun, I went online and I found the Bovey Tracy golf logo. So I'm importing the Bovey Tracy golf logo. There it is. And I was going to put it at the top, but I decided to put it at the bottom because as I fold it over, I want it to be the right way up. Um, got that to fit in. And then I'm just going to type in. Yep, use my typeface. I'm just going to type in yardage book 2020. Resize the font. Oh, make that a cap. Yep, we want this to look professional. We want yardage book to look professional. I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to move it underneath the Bovey Tracy Golf Center logo. Just going to resize it a little bit. 
center it up. And then, yep, just make sure that it fits in where I want it to fit in. Looks beautiful. Any blank page, um, this area here, which would technically be the very back of the book, I like just putting notes on. I write, so I just write notes just so that I know that I can write notes on it. And if other people want to use it, they know they can write notes on it. So I put in notes, I make the font a bit bigger, and then what I do is I flip it 180 degrees and it sits up. So what you're going to want to do is then you print this out, and this is the first, you cut, you print this out, you cut it in half from top to bottom. Yep, well, let's just make sure notes is exactly where we want it to be. Yeah, so thank you guys for watching. You cut it in half. You make sure that all your pages match up. It may take you a few times, but once you've got it down, you've got it down. You're going to, if you don't have a two-sided printer, I don't have a two-sided printer. I had to put my pages back in the opposite way up or the opposite way over so that I can print them out accordingly and they would all come out as a yardage book. Um, if you want to, you can go on our Instagram. We're at The Swingdom. At Twitter, we're on The Swingdom. This YouTube page, The Swingdom. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, turn on that little bell. You'll see videos of me using my yardage books. I may make yardage books of other courses I play. But please, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you will check out our podcast and check out other videos. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.